Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen make an important assumption in their argument, namely that things can only affect each other by intersecting in space and time. All causality is touching. This assumption is called locality. Things must share the same locality in order to affect each other, and the boundaries of this locale are determined by the speed of light. Bohr's interpretation of quantum mechanics must be wrong because it leads him to violate locality, i.e. the speed of light. In that case, if Bohr's right, then whatever it is that allows the entangled particles to coordinate their choices, whether it be the power of love or God or the force, would have to be a non-local variable coordinating things outside the laws of space and time. Years later, an Irish physicist named John Bell decided to force the issue in Einstein's favor. In a 1964 paper, he laid the groundwork for a profound experiment. The core of his argument is this. If Einstein is right, and things have determined properties before you measure them, then God's dice are loaded. That is to say, if you measure a large number of entangled quantum particles, then the results should be constrained in a particular way that reflects their predetermination by some local hidden variable. The results of such a game should not be 50-50, but at least 55-45. This is called Bell's inequality. Quantum mechanics predicts the opposite of this. The game is fair, the dice are perfectly balanced, and your chances are always 50%. To show this, Bell proposes a version of the einstein podolsky rosen experiment. As before, pairs of particles are entangled and then sent to be measured by two separate teams. However, this time, each team has a special measuring device. The device can measure a particle along one of three different axes. Which axis is measured for any given particle is chosen by the team. For each axis, a given particle can measure as either spin up or spin down. But since the particles are entangled, on a given axis, the particle pair must give opposite answers. But if each team chooses a different axis, then they could both be spin up. There is no need for them to coordinate in that case. Bell points out that if Einstein is correct, every particle must be predetermined along all three axes before being measured. And since the particles are entangled and must maintain conservation of energy, they can only come in one of three combination pairs. Up, down, up with down, up, down. Up, up, down with down, down, up and all up with all down. For each of these combination pairs, there are nine possible measurement outcomes, depending on which axis is chosen by which team in a given measurement. E.g., if team A measures axis 1 and team B measures axis 3, and the incoming particles are up, down, up on the one side and down, up, down on the other side, then the results will be up, down, or down, up, depending on which side. The point being that they will be alternating. And as it turns out, if you run through all the possible combinations that will show up, then you discover that for the first two combination pairs, five of the nine options are alternating. They're up, down, or down, up. While for the third combination pair, all nine options are alternating. They're all up, down, or down, up. In other words, if Einstein is correct, then at least five-ninths of the time, i.e. 55% or more, we should be getting alternating pairs. The fact that the particles must be determined along all three axes constrains the experimental results in an observable way. On the other hand, if Bohr is correct, then the particles are not predetermined along any of the axes. The only constraint on Bohr is that if both teams measure the same axis, the answers must be alternating in order to preserve the conservation of energy.
Otherwise, Bohr has no real constraints on him. He doesn't have to coordinate anything beforehand. When a measurement is made along a given axis, the other two axes remain indeterminate and they don't have to all coordinate. All Bohr has to worry about are the four possible results of measurement. Up, down, down, up, 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 and down, down. Two of these four measurements are alternating. The other two are the same. So if Bohr is correct, we should expect alternating pairs only about one half of the time, or 50%. The first Bell test was performed in 1972. Since then, well over 20 different Bell tests have been performed, often varying the parameters, using different equipment or technologies, and doing everything possible to cover a variety of potential loopholes in the experiment. But despite all of that, to date, Every single one of these experiments has supported Bohr over Einstein. Every experiment has violated Bell's inequality by showing alternating pairs 50% of the time.